Right, so Archer, as I think most of you already uh, know, but maybe not all of you, is the UK National HPC service here. It's a big Cray system, 72 plus thousand cores. Um, actually, these systems <clears throat> aren't that much different to your desktop system. So they have Intel Xeon 12 core processors in. There's two processors per box, so each node in the system has 24 cores inside it and there are 3,008 nodes in the system, um, and the 64 gigabytes of memory per node. Most of that stuff's reasonably standard. The, the processors are a bit more expensive than you normally buy for your desktop stuff, but it, it's pretty much doing the same thing as, as you get at home. The, the slight difference for HPC parallel systems compared to what you could do at home is the network which connects all those nodes together. And Cray have a, a high-performance network called Ares, which connects every node to every other node in a very fast, uh, so high bandwidth, low latency message time. So you can send a message in a couple of microseconds and you can send gig gigabytes of data at once. And that's really, the, at the moment, the main difference between a big parallel system and, and what you have um, locally. Of course, the other main difference is that for parallel systems, you don't generally get onto the actual compute nodes and, and run your job yourself. There is a job launch or a batch system which will take your job and, and run it for you on your system. And if you've been playing the past couple of days with the intro to HPC and stuff, you'll have, you'll have experienced that. That's primarily to stop people interfering with each other's jobs, because you're running a parallel system. You, it's a very expensive system, but you want to get high performance out of it. If two people use the same node at once, their jobs will be interacting with each other, stealing the CPU time off each other, and that's, that damages the performance. So it's primarily to say, we can give exclusive access to this set of compute nodes over here to this job. Um, it's also a security issue. You know, it, it stops people getting on the actual system, installing stuff on the system, uh, and it also means you can it, you can enforce policy on the system. So, if if the people who uh, pay for the system, like Epsex, uh, which is a funding body in the UK, say we're interested in only running very big jobs, then you can set up your batch system to to, to enforce that. So. Um, these are very poor quality pictures of Archer, uh, but this is a system, this is a big Cray system sitting out at the, um, at a, a compute facility out, outside Edinburgh. To use it, uh, just like I'm sure most of you have any experience of using these kind of systems before, will know you have to log on remotely, so we use this SSH um, client um, and use a minus X flag to make sure you can export windows. Let's not care about that too much. If you've not used this system before and never used a system like it, the slides will tell you that, that there, are, there are ways to set this up so you need an SSH client, but fortunately Linux and uh, Mac stuff usually has that built in for free and on Windows you can download a nice little executable that lets you do that. If we have problems, if you particularly have problems later in the practicals, so you can come around and help with that. There is a set of um, small template programs uh, which give you an example batch script if you haven't got one and an example make file to help you run the programs online in, in a similar place to where the slides are um, at the moment. So you can download those and again, it, I'll, I'll stick that up on, on the board. But if you have any problems with that, um, we can help you during the practicals in download and extract those. But if you've already been using the system the past few days, you may have batch scripts which already work for you anyway, so you can just use those. Archer, if you don't know, has three different compilers on it. Uh, Intel, GNU and Cray. For the stuff we're doing, we don't care. We can use any of them. And the Cray one is loaded by default, so you can just use that. But it's quite common for these kind of systems to have multiple compilers. Quite often they have GNU ones because they're free and people use them a lot elsewhere, so it makes it easy to port codes on. And then we have the Intel and Cray ones because they give high performance on these kind of systems. Again, if you've not used a system like this before, there's a whole bunch, there's quite a lot of different programs installed on Archer. To try and make it easier for you to use them, we use the modules, the GNU modules environment to, to let you set them up and, and choose what you want. So if you log on to a system and you type module list, it will tell you all the things that are currently loaded, all the different kind of programs that are currently loaded. Actually, most of these you don't care about, they're just setting up the network and stuff for you. But you can use that to <clears throat> switch between the compilers if you want 
and, and, and choose different compilers. And you know, if you are a user of this system, there's all sorts of different tools and software packages you can load up that are already pre-installed. And it just sets them up for you so, so you know where they're located and you can build against them and you can run them. So um, if you're interested in what's on the system, when we log on, you can type module avail and that will show you all the different things that are in put installed that you could possibly use. And you can have a look at specifics. You know, you can narrow that down and look at just what, what kind of GCC compilers install these kind of things. And then you can swap different things around. But let, let's not worry about this too much. You, in the practicals, if you're interested, we can come back and look at these. Um, suffice it to say, there is a system for managing the software which should make it easy for you to use different compilers or different bits of software when you're running the system. Actually, this, if you do use this GNU module system, it, it isn't magic. There's nothing particularly special about it. All it's doing behind the scenes is configuring a whole load of different things inside your batch script, inside your shell environment. So, so if, you, if you're interested in what it's actually doing, then you can have a look. The slight complication on the craze is that we don't generally call the compiler that we're using just in the normal way you would. So if you're using GNU, you would quite often call GCC or GFortran. You don't do that on McCray because you want it to set up the MPI libraries for you when you're building your program. So they provide these uh, wrappers like CC if it's a C compiler, uh, uppercase CC if it's a C++ compiler, and FTM for Fortran. And these are equivalent to when I discussed before, sometimes you get MPI CC compiler or MPI F90. This is the same kind of thing. It's just a wrap around the compiler to set up the MPI libraries for you. So that's how we build things. You can change between the different uh, MPI compilers, uh, sorry, different compilers we have, but again, we can come back to this. Um, the nice thing, hopefully, is that on in that little um, little uh, archive of scripts that we give you, there are a set of make files which will automatically build the programs for you and, and pick up the right compilers. So you'll see when you get that uh, archive as make file underscore C and make file underscore F. 90 to let you use these kind of things. As I've already said, you don't generally get access to the compute nodes. Right? So you never get access to the compute nodes, the things where your jobs actually run. Uh, but you can run interactively. There is a way of it running interactively, so you get onto a special set of job launching nodes and you can, you can manually launch your jobs yourself. And that's, you use a special um, command line to do this. Now, um, this can be quite nice if you're debugging programs or if you're trying to look for problems and doing, but, but in general that's not the way the system is used. Um, it's a shame because on quite, well it's not a shame, but on quite a lot of systems you can actually run MPI programs on the nodes you log into. You can't do that on Arch, it's not set up to do that, so um, uh, sometimes you may want to play around interactively, but generally we're not going to do that for this course because when you log interactively it takes a node and it assigns it to you and no one else can use that. And, that sort of locks up some of the resources we're using. So, um, what we're going to use is generally to run things inside using the um, batch system. And again, if you've been doing this already, then 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 you know what you're doing, and that's fine. Um, but but if you've not used this kind of system before to run programs, we have a batch system just called PBS. We've I'm, we've given you a, a template, an MPI batch.pbs, which you can use as a template file to run this. And then to run a job, you just use this command here, q sub minus q res number, which you replace here with this number that's on the board, which is r34918138. And then you put in minus l select equals one. So that says I want to run on one node. And one node has at most 24 cores on it on the system. So I want to run on one node, but actually I only want to use four cores on that node. And that will run this this, uh, my program, which is called hello on four cores on one node. Okay. And if you want to use more than that, you know, um, if you want to run on two nodes and use all the cores in the two nodes, you put L select equals two. And actually, if you're filling up the nodes using them all completely, you can just leave off this MPI procs bit at the end. But if you have a look inside this MPI batch, MPI batch.pbs file, which you'll be able to download, it has some examples of how you do this. So there's more detail in there, which which tells you how to different, use different things. Um, yeah. 
I don't need to go into too much detail of this, but uh, the Archer system has three different file systems on it. Why do we care about this? Well, the one you log into when you log into the system slash home um, is where you where it is backed up, but you can't see it from the compute nodes. So you try and run jobs from there and they will fail. So there's another file system called slash work. So we generally do all our, our job running and stuff from there because they can be seen from the back end compute nodes. Again, if you've already done a couple of days of work on Arch, you'll know all about this. If not, stick your hand up when we're doing the practicals and we'll come around and, and make this a bit clearer. So yeah, the recommendation is that do everything in work. So when you log in, just change to slash work slash y07 slash, is it y, y, is it, no, it's mine, y14, no, no, but, no, it was my typo. I've, I've spent too much time doing package maintenance. Sorry, this should be slash y14, y14, and then guess whatever you are and do all your work from there and that will save us any problems. Yeah, well, we'll skip over C++. Yeah, so, and um, if you want to look at more information on MPI other than what we get on the course, well, obviously there's these books which are going around, which is the, the latest printed version of these, uh, of the standard, uh, but you can also get it online. Um, and the systems, if you just type man and the name of the MPI routine on Archer, it will give you a, a page up showing you the call and, and how to use it. <laughs>